Here we've got a CFA level 1 question where we have to find the P-E ratio. We are given a beta, we're given the risk-free rate, the expected return of the market, the payout ratio, or the dividend payout ratio, and the expected dividend growth rate. So if we think about what the P-E ratio is, is price per earnings. If we just wanted to find the price of the stock with the information we have, what would we do? Well, we'd take the dividend for next year over the return on equity, um, so that's usually K minus the dividend growth rate, right? Because assuming this dividend is going to be paid in perpetuity, it's going to go on forever, and uh, the uh, present value of a stream of payments in perpetuity is the first payment divided by the uh, discount rate, and if it's a growth model, then you have to subtract the growth rate out of that discount rate. So the exact same thing happens here, except for think about what we want. We want the price to earnings ratio. So we're literally going to divide that price by the earnings, uh, and or the earnings per share, if you think of it that way. Um, if we divide the left side by earnings, we also have to divide the right side by earnings. So if we think about what the dividend per earnings um, or as a portion of the earnings you make, how much is being paid out as a dividend, that's our payout ratio, right? The payout ratio of 30% means if there's excess earnings for the company, 30% of it's going to be paid out in dividends, 70% of it's going to be retained as earnings. So there's your exact formula. So if we want the P-E ratio, it's just our dividend uh, per, out, of, out of the earnings, so the payout ratio, which is 0 0.3, divided by K minus G is our growth rate. We're given that, so 11%. Um, so we need to find the return on equity, and that beta is sort of the giveaway there that we're just going to use um, uh, cap M. And so we can say that uh, K has got to be equal to, starting with the risk-free rate, well, I'll even write out the whole formula here, risk-free rate uh, plus beta times the market risk premium, or the return of the market minus the risk-free rate, and that's going to be our return on equity. Start with the risk-free rate of 6%, I'll use 0 0.06, plus 1.5 for our beta. Our return on the market is 0.14 minus 0 0.06, and notice this bracket will give a difference of 8%, that's the market risk premium of this particular stock. Um, and we get 0 0.06 plus 1.5 times 0.08, which equals 0.18, so sub that in here, and we get 0.3 divided by 0.18 minus 0.11, which is $4.29. So that's the price per earnings uh, ratio. Again, it's the relationship between the price of the stock for the earnings of the company. Um, and again, thinking of the, the important concept here is the payout ratio. That 30% means that for every uh, excess, every dollar earned in excess, the company is going to pay out 30% in dividends, retain 70% in retained earnings. Here's a second question on the same topic. We're given the retention rate this time. It's really important to note whether you're given the retention rate or the payout ratio, those two things have to add to one because every dollar that's earned, you either pay it out or you retain it. We're given the return on equity of 25%, uh, our K value, our discount rate of 14%, and find the price of the stock, assuming next year's earnings will be $4.25. So price of stock, as soon as we see that, we want to think dividend discount rate. Problem is we're not given next year's dividend, but we are given next year's earnings. How much of that earnings will be paid out as a dividend? Well, $4.25 is earned, 40% is going to be retained, so 60% will be paid out as the dividend. That's going to give us $2.55. That will be next year's dividend. I'll call that D1. Great. Now the question is, you know, we assume dividends go on forever. Are they growing? Well, we can see that the return on equity in this company is 25%. That means every dollar we're investing from an equity standpoint is returning 25%. And of that earning, we're retaining 40% and paying out 60%. Therefore, uh, whatever's 
uh, retained, that counts as the growth for the base for next year's dividend, right? We're, we're earning 25% on our dollars invested. 40% of that earning is going back into the company, raising the base. So we can think of 25 times 40, the retention rate, which is just uh, ROE times retention. This equals the growth rate, right? It's basically the growth rate of the company. Uh, and that just equals 10%. So that means we are, well, we can assume we're growing our dividend by 10% every year. We're discounted at 14%, and our first year's dividend is 255. So we know how to calculate the price of the stock. It's next year's dividend divided by k minus g, which is 2.55 divided by 14% minus 10%. This is 10% here, the growth rate. And that gives us 63.75. So similar to the last question, only this time we were given our uh, next year's earnings. So we could then figure out what was going to be paid out, out of that, and that's the next year's dividend. All right, finally we have another calculate the price of a stock question. We've got a growing company, so there's going to be basically a dividend growth model. It's growing for 25% for two years, then 20% for one year, and then forever uh, at 8% after that. The last dividend paid was $2. We always want to draw a timeline, and we always want to go one year out, because the price today will be dictated based on the future dividends. So D1 at time 1 then a dividend at time two, then time three, and then it continues forever. So at time one, this is going to be a $2 dividend increased at 25%. So that dividend will be $2.50 at time one. Then we're going to, for, for the dividend at time two, it'll be that two fifty increased another 25% because it increases 25% again. That will be a dividend of $3, 3 dollars, 3.125. Then lastly for D3 and the final dividend rate before it grows steadily at 8% going forward, this one oh, from years 2 to year 3, it is increased at 20%. So we take our 3.125 and we increase it at 20%, so 1.2. And that equals 3.75. Okay, so here is how I, you can do this many different ways with the discounting, but I'm going to discount um, each individual. Uh, I'm going to decrease. I'm going to discount these two dividends first, and then I'm going to look at three and onwards as an infinite. Uh, dividend discount model because it's going to be in perpetuity growing at 8% after that. So here's here's what I'll do to discount this one back. So D1, or the present value I should say of D1, present value of D1, let's erase that, present value of dividend 1 is just equal to 2.5 divided by 14%, so 1.14. And the present value of D2 will be 3.125 divided by 1.14 squared. Then I need this entire perpetuity. So I'm going to do it this way. I'm going to say the present value of the perpetuity is my 3.75 divided by my 0.14 minus the growth rate going forward, which is 8%. 3.75 is the first dividend, and then it's growing at 8% from there. Now, I'm also going to divide this by 1.14 squared. And this is where people often get mixed up, is this is squared because this formula here, the present value of a perpetuity, takes the present value of all future dividends and brings it back to one period before 
the first dividend. So I've labeled that first dividend as 3.75. That takes place at time 3. So when I do this formula, the present value will be given at time 2, which is why I still have to discount the um, aggregate of those payments two years back to time 0. Put all of that uh, together, and we end up getting this is 2.19. This is 2.40, and the present value of all of these are 48.09. Add them all together, because now everything's back at time zero, and our stock price today would be estimated at 52.68.